Hello and welcome to my first playthrough. I am Richmond and this is Stationeers. Um, so this is kind of going to be a little uh, playthrough slash uh, video guide in a way um, where I am going to play through the game Stationeers. Um, it has been out for a while now on Early Access. Uh, it has continuously gotten better since it's very buggy but still fun start. Um, it is still continually being updated. Uh, lots of things continually being added. Plenty of new planets being added. Really solid game all around if you like uh, any sort of space survival sim. Um, before we get started here, I want to show you I have a couple of mods installed through the Steam Workshop. Um, one thing about this game is if you do download any mods, you need to come here into this workshop menu and put them above the core in the loading order. Um, there's a couple I use. Uh, this one right here allows for every vein of minerals that you mine to be a full stack of 50 grams. This just speeds things up a little bit, not have to spend quite as much time mining for minerals so that we can spend more time doing the cool stuff. Then there is the render distance changer. This mod will make some of the objects render from further away. Uh, this way you can, for example, see your base or your solar panels or things like that from further away. That will make it easier to see your base from further out. Um, and without this mod, sometimes the only thing you can see is maybe like a random light or two on a battery or something like that on your base. But this kind of helps to make it so that your base is visible at a distance that is more logical. Uh, then finally, there is a mod that increases the stacking size of cables from the default 50, which most uh, stackable things are, to 200. Uh, just allows more cables to be held in the inventory, not have to waste as much time going back and grabbing more cables and going back to the working area. Uh, there is another one that does it for pipes, which I might add at some point. But these are the ones I have right now just to make the game a little bit smoother. So I'm going to go ahead and start a new world. I've played through a couple of times. Um, there's plenty of different planets. If you've never played Stationer before, if you go into the the tutorial, actually, I believe, is in New World, perhaps. Ah, it's right down here, tutorial. Uh, that'll kind of teach you the, just the basics of the basics. Doesn't really even teach you everything you need to survive. For that, you can go into the new beginning scenario. Um, that'll teach you a little bit more, or there are plenty of video guides, or you can just watch this. Um, I may not be a perfect resource, but I can at least kind of show you some of the basics. So we're going to go ahead and start on the moon. Some of these other planets, they offer unique challenges. Um, for example, Mars has a kind of a dusty atmosphere that prevents you from getting a, the maximum efficiency of solar energy. Um, it also has a slightly askew uh, angle of the sun relative to where you are, whereas on the moon, the solar angle is zero. This eliminates um, having to get some really complicated things together with trying to have your solar panels track the sun for maximum efficiency. And overall, it's just the uh, kind of the most simple, most forgiving um, planet slash environment to start on. When you get really good at the game, you start going with Vulcan, which is a magma world that is very, very difficult. So we'll go ahead and create a world on the moon and let's get going. So one of the cool things about Stationeers is that even though it is not completely and totally fleshed out yet, it can still offer you a lot of things to do, such as creating your own atmospherics and electrical systems, um, just a lot to do. The game just has so many things to offer and uh, just a fun, relaxing way to pass the time. Really good to just hop on, choose one task that you want to accomplish, and just do it. So we're going to go ahead and exit out of that getting started. If you want to read it the first time you play through, you definitely have the option to do so. So when we first spawn in the world, we have our lander here. 
and it has a bunch of crates and we will need these crates because in stationers one of the things that um, you cannot do is you cannot craft anything from your own inventory directly you need the different crafting benches in order to craft anything um, so if you do not have in the construction supplies crates for example the auto lathe kit then you're not going anywhere really um, so we will need that. The very, very first thing though that we're going to do, and this is, and I cannot stress this enough, the very first thing you want to do is you want to, oh, let's turn my jetpack on and fly out of that hole. This is sometimes a concern that happens in this game. We might uh, decide to build our base further away from that, maybe over here. Um, the very, very first thing you want to do is you see over here on the left side of the screen, um, I've got all of these different things that are part of my suit. I've got my helmet, my suit, my back, my uniform, and my belt. Um, on the helmet, you want to open this up, and when you open something up by pushing the number that corresponds to it, you can either use the scroll wheel to scroll to the function that you want to do and use F, or you can hold down Alt, which brings up the mouse pointer, and click on it. Um, but what you want to do is lock the mask because this little thing right here, open mask, it has the keyboard shortcut of I, which is really bad because, because the letter O is the on button for any tools that are held in your hand. Um, so what results is that occasionally your finger will drift over the wrong button, you'll go to turn on your tool, and you will open your mask, um, opening yourself up to vacuum, which is not immediately lethal in stationers, but it does cause a loss of oxygen and it gets you uh, starting on the road to blacking out if you don't quickly uh, realize what happened and address it. So just to avoid that entirely from happening, we will lock the mask. So even if I click open mask here, or if I press the I button, I will not open up my helmet and expose myself to vacuum. So that is the very, very first thing we wanna do. Now, let's get going. So the very first thing to take care of in stationers is power. One of the things that you must have in order to survive on the moon is power. So if when we open up the EVA suit, right here we've got the battery for our life support. The life support maintains our temperature inside our suit over here at a balmy 20 degrees Celsius. It also maintains our internal pressure at a target of 50 kPa, um, and that is used in our air tank full of oxygen. Um, so if we don't have power for this, we will die because it will not be able to maintain our temperature and it will not be able to keep air circulating through our suit. It will just be a really bad time and that will not be good. So I'm going to do a couple things here to manage my inventory. I'm going to grab these iron frames out of this box. I'm going to put these road flares back in there. I'm going to take this duct tape and put it into my suit you always want to hold on to your duct tape if your suit ever gets a puncture in it say from falling from a large height or something you might get a rip in your suit or helmet and if you don't have duct tape to seal it you'll slowly bleed out oxygen and temperature um, then i'm going to take my handheld tablet i'm going to open it up using r and i'm going to go ahead and put a circuit card into it so that um, i free up an inventory slot in my backpack and also my tablet can be used as a tracker with the um, beacon. We'll go ahead and close that. These other cartridges I don't need at the moment. Eventually we'll need these, but not right now. So we're gonna swap some of these out. I'm gonna take the iron sheets, whoops. Let's see, let's put that back in there. We'll take our cartridges and swap it out with some iron sheets. We will also take the solar panel kit. You can hold down Alt and drag stuff around if you want. It kind of can make things easier. Then we'll take the glass sheets, put all that stuff in there that we don't need for the time being. There we go. So we've got our iron frames in this hand. Um, one of the things that we need to do is we need to get a base camp set up so that we can start establishing our manufacturing bench and our furnace and things like that. So I'm just going to go ahead and build right here three iron frames by 
three iron frames. Now these are just the frame of it. They don't actually have a solid middle. We can weld some iron sheets on there. Now the sunrise comes from that direction. This right here faces the sunrise. And that is important because when we do our solar panels, we want to be able to have them facing the sunrise. Um, so we're going to extend a few more out that way so that our solar panels can face the sunrise going off in that direction rather than being one in front of another as they face the sunrise so that we don't cast shadows onto our own solar panels with our solar panels, which would cause a loss of efficiency during the beginning of the day and the end of the day. So we've got that done. So once we have the iron frames down, we're going to put iron sheets in our hand. Uh, we are going to open up our belt and get out our arc welder, pushing the zero button or the O button to turn it on. And we are going to weld a iron sheet to each one of these iron frames. And in doing so, it'll make it into a, it doesn't look completely solid, but you will not fall through it regardless. If even if it has those gaps in it. Um, you can do it again to make it a fully solid surface, which will actually make it airtight. You can build a base by having these all around and it'll make it solid like that. But for our purposes right now, we do not need it to be completely solid. So we'll be good there. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our solar panel kit and we're going to put it out here. Uh, the sunrise will be that way, so we're going to rotate it using the insert button, and we're going to have the power side facing away from the sunrise and the uh, data side, which is those three blocks facing towards the sunrise. The reason why it will have to do with the uh, automated controls of our solar panel as we get more advanced. Then we will take a glass sheet and we will complete the build of the solar panel, which brings up an important point. Many things in this game, once they are placed, they are not quite ready to roll yet. So for example, our auto lathe, when we get it out and push the right click in order to build it, um, let's say I build my auto lathe. Let's just build it right here. It still requires a welding torch and two iron sheets in order to finish it. So we'll get our iron sheets back out in one hand we will get our welding torch out in the other hand, and we'll do that. Uh, but it is still not done. It requires four cable coils to continue construction. Cable coils, done. Now it requires plastic sheets in our welding torch, which we did not get out before, because early on you don't need the plastic sheets for a whole lot other than for manufacturing. So we will split one off using the alt click or the R button will open up this little sub menu, which will allow you to split off stacks of objects. Oh, I need two plastic sheets. Whoops. Let's put those back in there. We'll grab the whole thing of iron sheets. We will split one, split one. Notice how it dropped one since we had both our hands full. So now we've got two iron sheets and our welding torch and we will continue its construction. Make sure you turn the welding torch on before you go to use it. Um, it's very embarrassing to you know, realize that the reason that your tool is not working is because you forgot to push the on button. The last thing we will do is we'll use the screwdriver to complete the construction and voila, we have our auto lathe. However, our auto lathe is not quite ready to roll first because we need to power it. Now it's not quite so simple of just connecting our solar panels power output directly to our auto lathe's power input. For one, it's nighttime right now, so we would not be getting any power anyway. But for two, um, the solar panel generation is kind of a constant low stream of power. The auto lathe and other manufacturing um, benches will kind of have short bursts of electrical um, requirements. So in order to smooth that out and also to provide power even when we do not have direct sunlight, we have got these area power controllers. So these are a very important thing to know how to use. So we will place it here. 
Um, now, in order to do anything with this area power controller, there's two things we need to do. First off is that we need to have a battery, a large battery specifically. Um, large batteries are, have much higher capacity than small batteries. Your suit, I believe it can take a small battery, but it would not last very long at all. You want a large battery in order to power it. But also, we need to be able to swap batteries out with the one in our suit when that one gets low. Not if, when, because it will go down. So we will put this battery in there, and when we have that connected, and notice how we had the input and the output. Let me go get that other area power controller so I can kind of show you what I meant. If you notice that there are arrows, there's the arrows coming into it and the arrow going out of it. Um, that one right there going out, the other one going in. That is the direction that you'll have power coming in, charging it, and the direction of power going out. The area power controller also acts as a switch in a way in that you can turn off um, the switch. Uh, we're going to flip that up to on. The green light means it's on. Now the, this will actually have flashing codes based on what is going on with it. If it is like a solid green, it means there is a Either there is no drain on the battery at all, or the um, battery is full and has a input that is more than sufficient to keep it topped off. If it has a, a uh, red flashing light, that means it is being drained or empty. Um, so you, that little light on there can kind of tell you what's going on with your stuff. Now, so we are going to start placing our cables going over to our auto lathe as we scroll through the different ways you can build it, build your cables, corners, straight pieces, etc. Um, we can use three-way corners. We will get over to our area power controller and voila! We now have our auto lathe powered by our area power controller which has a battery as kind of a buffer that this will drain first but uh, even as it's being drained, when there is direct sunlight on the solar panel, it will charge the battery. So, we can now turn our auto lay on. Haha, -ha, we have power. So, we can build stuff in here, but in order to build stuff, we will need resources. One of the very first things that we'll want to build is the electronics printer. The electronics printer can get all sorts of things that we need for automation, and it can build us additional batteries and things like that. But in order to build that, we need iron, gold, and copper. Well, let's go mining. If you notice, it is blue and red flashing. That means that there is uh, power available, hence the blue, and the red means that it is being drained. Whereas if we turn this off, there is no longer a drain, there's just a red light, which means it is not a completely full battery, but it is not being charged. If it was being charged, it would, I believe, be flashing, flashing red and either red and blue or red and green. I think it'd be flashing red and green if it was being charged. Um, I don't remember. There's some place I'm sure that you can figure out exactly uh, what flashing coats mean what but let's go mining so we're going to open up our backpack this is our mining belt we're going to drag it into the belt slot that'll swap the tool belt to our backpack and give us the mining belt right there we'll open up the mining belt get out the mining drill and use the o button to turn it on well it just so happens we've got some copper right by our base it puts a stack of copper into our inventory right there We've got some gold right by our base, puts a stack of gold right there, thanks to the 50 grams of minerals mod that I downloaded. Uh, just really is a time saver if you don't like to spend your time going around hunting for minerals, uh, which can be a very good thing because the fun in this game is building, in my opinion. Uh, this is not necessarily an exciting world to explore like uh, Minecraft or something like that. Uh, this really is the moon. It is desolate. It is barren. There are no aliens. Spoiler alerts. Uh, there's, as far as I have seen, really there are no sights to see out around the moon. That is not to say that all of the planets are like that. There is one planet that is more of a survival challenge that has a breathable atmosphere and has very scarce resources and you start out with less 
Hey, there's some coal. We'll get a couple stacks of that and I'll show you what we could use that for. What we're looking for right now is iron. You'll use a lot of iron in stationers. Um, a lot of iron. You don't want to stray too far from your base early on um, unless you set up the tracker, which I did not. We're just trying to find some iron. It's kind of a like a that color right there. A metallic brown. We'll keep on looking and see if there's any more iron underground here. Sometimes when there's just a small piece sticking out like that though, there might not be any more underground, which is fine. We can just get this for now and go with it. We don't need any more gold for the time being. Before we put our mining drill away, we'll make sure to turn it off. You do not want to leave uh, tools on in your inventory. It'll drain the battery and you'll just go through power faster, which early on can be a big pro problem. So we'll go ahead and pick up the arc furnace and we will set it somewhere where we can easily get power to it. So that little power thing is the input side. We'll put it right there and we will need to hook up some power to it. We'll take that tool belt, put it back there because that's where our cable coil is. Then we will also equip our wire cutters in our offhand. This is important because if you just have a cable, uh, a cable coil and you try and build off of a cable, an existing cable, you can't do anything with it. You would have to use the cable cutters to deconstruct the cable and then build a new one instead. However, if you have the cable cutters in your offhand, it'll actually allow you to build like this. As you can see, it is building like a straight off of that corner and it'll turn this corner into a three-way like so. So having the cable cutters in your offhands are really nice trick it works the same way with pipes with a wrench so we'll put those back in there and in fact one of the things i like to do is i like to switch my wire cutters here with my angle grinder so that my cable cutters and my wire are right next to each other so i've got my arc furnace powered up we'll put that mining belt back onto our belt slot and we will pop the iron into our right hand using the mouse reel to scroll to it push f put it in there turn on the arc furnace and activate and as you can see it is smelting down the iron ore and when it is done it'll pop out this backside and smelt it into an iron ignit um, we cannot use the raw ores in order to build stuff with for reference there it says iron gold and copper 20 grams of iron 2 grams of gold 10 grams of copper for the electronics printer but that needs to be an ignat form so we're going to let that go. It is putting a drain on my battery. Uh, the sun is going to rise at some point. I think, yeah, the sun will rise up that way. Um, so while that's smelting, we'll go ahead and get our tool belt back out and we'll grab our wrench. The wrench is used for a lot of different things. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tilt my solar panel to face the sunrise. You can use these little uh, rotation points in order to tilt it so that is zero degrees downwards and then I'm going to go the horizontal to take it to negative 90 degrees which will face that data port so now I am at zero degrees facing the sunrise now throughout the day you can tilt it upwards to kind of follow the Sun in order to have greater efficiency right now it says generating zero watts efficiency zero percent but when the Sun is up the more directly your solar panel is pointed at the sun, um, it'll generate more electricity to a maximum of 500 watts per solar panel, um, and that's on a continuous tick. I don't remember exactly what the tick rate is, but um, if your efficiency is low, then it will be lower than 500 as a percentage of 500, depending on how efficient it is. Now, you don't get perfect efficiency for the first little bit. That's because this, even at 0%, does not actually go to zero degrees. It is actually like about a 15 degree um, like a gap there on each end. So it is actually only 150 degrees of motion, which is important. We will get to that later. But for now, we'll turn that arc furnace back off so that we don't waste any power. 
and as you can see that battery controlling our area power control is back to full back to blue and I'm actually going to go ahead and swap those so that it will charge that it's always a good idea to be hot swapping your batteries even if they are not currently empty so that you can maintain the highest charge it does you no good to have a full battery sitting on a charger um, and in fact is just a waste of potential energy and I'll go ahead and tilt this upwards a little bit so that even as the Sun moves higher it will continue to improve efficiency that way I can kind of ignore this for a little while so we've got our iron we'll stick it in that side of the auto lathe and we will turn on the auto lathe and we'll do our electronics printer here on the next episode um, but for now I'll just kind of show you what you can do with this so for an example we will print out something that only requires that iron we will print out a oh sure we'll do a another iron frame we don't really need it but we'll do it push the button to turn it on it will build and it will start building another one as long as there's resources in there to build it unless you turn it off so it'll spit out an auto for iron frame out of the output boom we have built our first item um, we are on our way to moon-based self-sufficiency, but I will end this episode now, and our next episode we will go more into power and try and get that electronics printer built and work on getting more solar panels and getting automated solar tracking. 